Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And in between us we have... Hello, I'm Jez Kerr from Kerr Acoustic. Jez Kerr, what a pleasure it is to have you on the sofa. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. It's nice to have you as well. Don't look at me like that. I'm here, Mike. I'm very pleased to have you as well, David, of course. But lovely to have Jez here for a very special episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. Because, David, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, I think we should ask Jez, actually, (laughs) as he designed it. Jez, sure. what are we going to be talking about today? Well, so we've got the new Kerr Acoustic K200 speakers, um, which uh, David's uh, had here for a little while. I um, have, yeah. And has been forming opinions on, hopefully yes. positive ones. <laughs> well, you know, uh, they're, they're quite crap actually, Mike, oh. so we'd, we'd better try back something to the else. Board. Yeah. Back, back to my Amstrad LS101s or whatever <laughs> they are. <laughs> yes. so. uh, actually, it's funny you should say that, because in all the years I've known you, I don't think I've ever known you make uh, room by getting rid of your Yamaha NS1000s from your listening. Yes. This is very much a first. Uh, so they really can't be that bad, David, can they? No, they can't. So uh, it's, it's, it's a big emotional moment for me to physically move my <laughs> NS1000s out of the way. Um, and the K200s are even bigger, aren't they? I they think, are. Just. They're certainly deeper. Yeah. So and, and what's, taller. what's the cabinet volume? Uh, the cabinet volume on these, well, it's sort of you know in, in the region of about ooh, 90, 95 liters. So they're they're not yeah. small. Yeah. Um, they're quite on the large side. Yeah. It's a large stand mount loudspeaker. Um, it certainly is. Yeah. They certainly take over the room, don't they? They look amazing in here. <laughs> they're the focal point, aren't they? Thank they you. look fantastic. They're, they're beautifully made, beautifully built. Just a little bit about them. So yeah. there's a couple of unusual aspects to the design, aren't there? So There are, Particularly yeah. with regard to your treble units um, and these little sort of ports at the bottom here. Absolutely, yeah. Well, it, it is a, a transmission line speaker. So like all of the Kerr Acoustic range, uh, transmission line base loading is sort of at the core of the design principle. Um, and uh, we're using, of course, the True Ribbon Tweeter that we've got in our other models as well. Um, so really, I guess, you know, there are several kind of bits of kind of, you know, trick technology you could say in there, but I guess two of the real USPs there are the combination of the transmission line and the True Ribbon as well. Um, so why did you choose transmission line then, Jez? So mm. obviously all your speakers are TLs, aren't they? They are. Um, and um, until recently, with the exception of a few notable exceptions, um, most speakers on sale are being base reflex port, haven't they? They have, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, a few occasional infinite baffles, but not much. Mm. Um, but I mean, I, I remember transmission lines being very popular in the late 70s. Yes. Um, yeah. Like you're thinking of the IM, IMF TLS-80 and the TLS-50 yes. and various other things yeah. like that. Yeah, Cambridge R50. Cambridge like R50, that. Yeah. absolutely. Mm. So, you know, how come you suddenly decided to resurrect this this, <sighs> this concept? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I can be uh, sort of appraised with uh, sort of, you know, fully bringing it into the 21st century. I mean, there are other brands doing transmission yep. line loading, but... Um, yep. I've I've always had a, a soft spot for for TLs and I've sort of grown up being surrounded by lots of different speaker technologies and playing around with infinite baffle designs, reflex enclosures, of course, um, you know, even some sort of bandpass enclosures. And, and for me, transmission line loading always gave um, what I considered to be the sort of the most sort of lifelike base in terms of the sort of you know kind of extension that you get. Obviously, a, a TL rolls off more gradually yep. than, a, than a reflex enclosure. Um, and also just the sort of speed and articulation that you can get with a really well implemented TL, I think is, is sort of hard to beat. So um, I think that's what sort of steered me in that direction. Yeah. So, I mean, they're kind of a halfway house, uh, put very crudely mm. between a reflex ported design. Well, that's correct. And, yeah. and an, an infinite baffle mm. sealed box. Yes. Um, and basically the, uh, the, the air has to travel through mm. the, the transmission line, doesn't it? Which is a kind of, elongated that's um, right uh, uh, what's the word well it's a wave guys it's a wave fundamentally guide, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's it or so it could be considered like a sort of a conduit if you like yes. for the sort of the rearward a energy labyrinth the a labyrinth there we go <laughs> that sounds good a, 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 <laughs> a very deliberately structured carefully yes uh, measured um, yes dimensioned carefully uh, damped and yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah yeah so it's all about you know kind of doing what you can with that energy from the, the rear of the cone um, yeah 
because obviously the energy from the, the back of the cone is, you know, sort of equal to the energy from the front, but it's, of course, 180 degrees yeah. out of phase. Yeah. And, you know, in, in a sort of perfect world, that energy would sort of disappear into a black hole and you'd just be left with the sort of perfectly phase coherent yeah. output from the front. So the choice of the designer is really what to what to do with that rearward energy and having this sort of this labyrinth um, yeah. sort of channeling that energy away from the cone. And then a lot of the sort of higher frequency content gets absorbed as it makes its journey around. And what you're left with is um, the sort of lowest, lowest octaves. Um, and of course, because there is a sort of a bit of a time delay in that process, what you end up with is an output from the port, which is essentially working in phase with the front of the cone um, yeah. over a sort of wider bandwidth yeah. than you might have in a reflex enclosure. And that, that's, the, that's the key point, isn't it, really? So uh, it's it's much more phase coherent within its mm. operating region, mm. um, but I guess it's still difficult to design it so it doesn't um, mm. play silly buggers elsewhere in the uh, yes. frequency range. It, it is, yeah. That's that's the challenge really to get it to yeah. behave where you want it to without sort of muddying things up. Yeah. Sort of. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and avoiding that sort of one note base that you you, yeah. you know because um, all of my transmission lines are, are tapered. There's yeah. a sort of a taper ratio in there. Um, and if you, you know, so that helps to, again, break up any sort of standing waves or nodes that may occur if it was just like an organ pipe kind of thing. Yeah. So there's a bit of, you know, head scratching that sort of goes into yeah. it. To, yeah. yeah. Are you, are you God, paying are you attention, Mike? you two actually Mike? separated at birth? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so I didn't understand any of that, as you know. Um, so let's talk about things I do understand. So we've just actually had a really, really cool listening session with these. Um, and I think we've just put the fear of God into Jez because um, we've been playing him some of the dodgiest music he's probably ever heard in his entire life. Because uh, David and I definitely have a dubious music taste. It was um, great. So, so would you like well, to? Would you like to? <laughs> would, well, you have. Would you like to? Um, to tell everybody what we've been listening to, Mr. Price. Well, I tell you what. I'll actually go and get the records. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Nice. okay. Nice. Right. Excellent. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. Sure. I'll give you some idea of genres. So we've mm. been listening to um, to uh, techno, uh, fairly heavy dub. Yes. Um, we've been listening to eighties pop. Uh, synth-based 80s pop yes, um, and all of these amazing things. So actually, Jez, in all honesty, in all mm. fairness, we've been putting your speakers through their paces you today, have. haven't we? You absolutely um, have. With things which they've good. never, it's ever listened to, to before. Yeah. And, uh, and so, David, where did we start? We started, well, we started with, with that. Which is Fleetwood Mac Rumours, Japanese popular pressing. popular tune Japanese with young people pressing. these days, I'm told. Yes, it allegedly. It is. Yes. So Jez had heard of them. Complete with Obi Strip. Look yeah. at that. Very nice. Obi. Okay, yeah. very yeah. good. And next, so, next um, was... Right. Next up, a bit ditch so, that. All right, ditch that. Yeah. So, pretty, pretty. Yeah. 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 So this is one of uh, Mike and my uh, personal yes, okay. favourites. So this is Police yeah. Officer by Smiley Culture. Yeah. Um, cool. That well-known that well known tune. Um, but actually, some pretty heavy bass on here, which was really giving your, your speakers a good workout. It was, it? yeah. It got them, uh, got them, yeah, got them <laughs> moving some air, didn't it? Yeah. It really <laughs> did, uh, which was quite amazing, actually. Mm. Um, and they certainly handled Smiley Culture. So for those of you wanting to spend, sorry, Jez, how much are these? The speakers, yes, I uh, resell at nineteen nine nine five. Okay, so if you're going to spend twenty grand on a pair of speakers because yeah. you're a Smiley Culture fan, hmm. it's money well invested. <laughs> That's is. our Mike yeah. and Dave's riff top tip yeah. uh, for the day there. Hmm. Uh, followed by, um, oh, that was cool. This was yeah. uh, the Beatmark Beatmasters, Beatmasters Rock yeah. to House. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, that well-known hi-fi demo track. Yeah, <laughs> this um, is great. If it wasn't, it certainly will be now. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant track with sledgehammer bass. Isn't and, it? Yes. And can I just say when when yeah. David put this on, uh, Jez immediately reached for for Shazam on his uh, did, his iPhone to find out what it was yeah. and, and use it for obviously reference purposes. Absolutely. Like, so I need yes, this in that my was life. that was particularly <laughs> excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so a nice bit of uh, early nineties trance. Ah yeah. uh, yes, mm. Age, Age of uh, Love. Age of Age Love. Love. Jam Spoon. Yeah. yeah. Remix. That's uh, that pretty good. seminal stuff. Jez, they worked uh, really well with that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, they did. They didn't. It was amazing, wasn't it? It was. It was. I mean. Yeah, really cool tune. Had us yeah. reaching for the lasers, didn't it? it absolutely. <laughs> and David's got plenty of those. Have you noticed? <laughs> yeah, he's got yeah. he's got a ray gun in his cupboard at the back. So yeah. I've heard a Japanese so ray I've gun. Heard. Yeah, I, I found it. And the battery's flat. It doesn't work at the moment. Oh, that's a real shame, isn't it? Mm. Because it's gold. He's got a gold ray gun. David is the man with the golden gun. <laughs> and we need to feature this. I'm going to take a photo of this. I'm going to prove yeah. some more of these these props. Yeah, yeah. Thrill. yeah. Um, yeah. cool. So so sort of putting through through its paces. You've got a copy of um, of a. Album I've this never is seen a, before. A popular beat combo from uh, Canada. 
Excellent. Um, and um, we didn't actually play this today, mm. but I've been playing this a lot through mm. the uh, K200s. Have you? Um, so this is Signals yeah. by Rush, yeah. which is a pretty you, classic you a fan of them? Oh, you might. oh, don't you is start. That a, I get enough <laughs> that's one, you, one you've heard of. This is all we need. So, Jess, this is your only appearance. <laughs> don't blow it. <laughs> You're doing well, Jess. In fact, you might be able to replace Mike. <laughs> God, the I way you two play. are going on about it, it won't yeah. be a problem. Um, yeah, so yeah. so excellent. So, so we, but I'm going to listen to that when we've when we've finished our riff actually, because yes. I really love these. Now, can I just say as well, just a little bit of a rewind here, mm. because um, I first heard these and mm. met you at one of the Hi-Fi shows a few years ago. That's right. Yeah, um, and and in fact, and and I um, I told you this at the time, and and I don't think you believe me, but I felt you were making the best sound at that particular Hi-Fi show. I think it was Bristol. It would have pre-pandemic, yeah, possibly. With, and yeah. what speakers would they have been? That would have been the K. I think at the K300 are the ones you first heard that's the small stand mount yes and then later so when you had half a bottle of red wine with Max Townsend we, we did, <laughs> had drunk half a bottle of red wine with Max Townsend as well bless yeah. him gosh good Aww. old Max um, but yeah so they were sounding mm. amazing and actually then we listened to them again with the bigger speakers the K oh the 320s so the floor standing version yeah, yeah. and yeah. again I thought you were best in show there oh, and, and at that Thank time um, I was with a, a, a sort of bunch of us going around and I think we were all in agreement there. Mm. Um, which is really saying something when you yeah, think that's of, huge you know, there's some Thank big, you. there's some proper kit at some of these high fashion. There shows. are absolutely. So, so that some was a st- real stiff treat. competition. Yeah. So that put, put you firmly on certainly mm. my radar. I know David, you'll have known about Kerr Acoustics for a while now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think we we kind of met, came across one of the very early on. Didn't we, we did absolutely in your, uh, in your hi-fi yeah. journey. My hi-fi journey. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Really, right at the very beginning of the sort of actual yeah. kind of. And it was it yeah. the K. Which one? Which one did I? The floor stander. Yeah. I so um, the K three twenty you reviewed for Stereo yeah. Net and also for for Choice. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. I think prior yeah. to that you may have borrowed the K three hundred just to sort of yeah you know kind of yeah. get familiar with the house sound a little bit and then that's right. You went I on think I was just started standard. at Stereo Net, hadn't I? That's, that's right. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was a very interesting speaker to mm. hear, um, and it had a you know obviously I, I like NS. The one thousands. Do you? It's, it's an open secret mic. Everyone else has heard apart, apart from you. <laughs> so, um, well, he's in I, good company there because yeah, I like yeah. them as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I've, I, you know, so I found those um, K three twenties were had a quite NS thousand sound type sound, didn't they? So um, they're tight bass, mm. um, open, clean treble, very detailed. Mm. Obviously, you know, they're much smaller than the K two hundreds. Sure. Uh, we're using now, mm. but. Um, very great, you know, great rock speaker. Yeah, um, and uh, really liked bass, like reggae and all that yes. kind of stuff. Yeah, um, but still refined uh, enough and detailed enough for classical mm. and jazz. Oh, thank you. And you were saying yeah. craft work as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, craft I work, do love a bit of craft work, which, is, which yeah. is obviously right up our alley yes. too, isn't it? Um, yeah. But far more importantly, and the real reason why you're here is because you've just bought us a pint down the Hi-Fi pub. I have, and um, <laughs> and we've just found out as well that you're a proper Hi-Fi nerd. Afraid so, uh, yes. Yeah, which came of. as quite a shock. So, um, mm. so I'm not quite sure how somebody so young can do so much <laughs> uh, trivial rubbish about Hi-Fi. But well, uh, yeah. it's definitely well, I refer you birth, to your really. uh, <laughs> your earlier life, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, there we are. So. P, yeah. P in a pod, as it were. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that was quite interesting. Sure. We were talking about some quite interesting kit we from, were. from yesterday. I thought we could have sort of carried on for another three hours or so and yes. uh, covered was, the full gamut. We'd yeah. probably need to get a taxi home if we'd done that. Yeah, so, possibly. Uh, yeah. But no, that was really good. And it's so nice cool. to, you know, you have such a passion for it. Thank um, you. And, uh, mm. you know, it, it be, it, it's, it's great to sort of, it's not just a bunch of old duffers who are into sure. hi fi is where Absolutely. I'm coming from here. Yeah. Uh, well, which, it's all about the music, isn't it? Yeah. Ultimately. Yeah. So, you, Jess, tell us a bit about your kind of, uh, you know, mm. how you got into this. And did, yeah. did you do acoustics at college or uni or yeah so i did a degree in audio engineering yeah um but prior to that i'd been a sort of lifelong loudspeaker fanatic to be honest with you um and really that came from a sort of early love of music being surrounded by music um my dad was a you know guitarist still is my mum was a classically trained opera singer yeah um and you know so i was really immersed in music yeah. as a youngster and um, went to lots of concerts, lots of recitals and gigs. And when I came home, speakers were the way that the music 
continued at home. It was yeah. like the music didn't have to stop when you left the concert hall, you know. So speakers became an object of fascination yes. from a really early age. And um, and yeah, I you know you know from from you know pretty much since I could walk, you know, I'd get my parents to take me to the car boot sale and get as many old junk yeah. speakers as mm-hmm. possible, cannibalize them, and Dad being a carpenter helped because he could knock some boxes together for me. So I've been playing around with speakers you've served my your whole apprenticeship life. yeah kind of yeah. yeah well you've ended up with Trial an amazing <laughs> well i want to say end result but i'm hoping Thank it's you. not the end i'm hoping no, there's a lot more to come, more to from, come. from cur yeah. acoustics so because it's been an amazing journey mm. uh, and i think what we don't want is for you to be sort of the best kept secret in hi-fi because sure. um you know your mm. speakers are just absolutely outstanding Thank we're, you, we're, we're thrilled that you've, you've brought them with him here yeah and, well david's had them for a couple of weeks and he's been raving on about them yeah. so we've had to we've had to come to wiltshire as you can see today to do our riff um, and it's just been yeah, an absolute treat, to be absolute here. treat. yeah so well, brilliant tell us about the obviously mm. we talked about infinite ba- the uh, sorry the um, a transmission line design mm. um, to me there's another very well there's several other interesting aspects so mm. for the um, let's start at the top sure T- tell me about the tweeter in the k200 yeah so it's a a true ribbon yep um, so not an AMT style, um, as we're starting to see becoming more commonplace. It is a, a true ribbon, and what that really boils down to um, is the fact that the diaphragm uh, and the and the conductor are one and the same. So there's no moving mass there whatsoever. So with a, a typical dome tweeter, you've obviously got the actual dome itself. Yep. You have the surround, you have the voice coil and the former, and that together constitutes the moving mass. Yeah. So with a true ribbon, you just have this very thin sliver of aluminium foil that's suspended in a strong magnetic field. Um, that has an impedance coupling transformer bolted to the back of it um, because you know otherwise they'd, it would basically measure a dead short, so you yeah. have to compensate for that. Um, but the real benefits, um, to my mind at least, of a true ribbon is, is that extremely low moving mass. You yeah. have. So we, we're talking about about one eighteenth of the moving mass of a good dome tweeter. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, but simultaneously, you actually get a sort of slightly larger surface area, um, and you can get a very strong magnetic field around it. Yeah. Um, so, so that that translates to uh, much better transients mm. and also lower distortion. That's correct. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Less smearing in the time domain because yeah. there's less mass to kind of get in the way. Yeah. Yeah. And mm. um, so moving down to yeah. the mid range um, mm. uh, you've got a large dome um, which is uh, an interesting way to go it's sort of ATC type yes. NS1000 type kind of thing isn't it it is um, why did you choose what you chose and what driver is that yeah so that is a Volt uh, VM753 um, which is uh, virtually identical to the version in the bigger brother the K100 it just has a slightly smaller magnet assembly yeah. um, but the dome and you know um, coils and suspension are all the same. So that really comes from my sort of background, you know, hanging out, hanging around in recording studios. Yep. So I was always drawn to big studio monitors just for their kind of full scale and openness. And so many of them had the three inch dome, of course, pioneered by uh, by ATC yep. um, way back in the 70s. Yeah. Um, and of course, these days produced by Vault, um, they do a few different versions, but that's just something about that three inch dome um that again it's sort of low distortion low moving mass but high power handling and yeah. good dispersion obviously yeah. being a dome yeah. so that was sort of the the natural choice yeah. there yeah. and you've married it to uh, a very interesting vault uh, bass driver haven't you? yeah Tell so us about that. again from vault so this is a kind of uh, well i guess it's a bit of a world exclusive really um many know vault uh, loudspeakers for their radial uh, intercooler chassis that you see on a lot of pro yeah. speakers. Um, yeah. Essentially, you've got a sort of, um, well, it, it, instead of having a basket at the rear of the cone, um, sort of connecting the magnet to the mounting assembly, you actually have that on the front. So you've got this cast steel frame, yeah. um, which essentially acts like a, like a radiator. So yeah. it's drawing heat out from the voice coil and radiating it into the room yeah. um, rather than keeping it in the cabinet. Um, and I say it's a sort of a world exclusive because this is actually the first commercial product on the market to feature the brand new 10 inch version of this very special piece of engineering from yeah. Vault. I can't believe how much air they move. Ah, yeah. I mean, it is phenomenal, isn't it? Sure. The, the base they, they put out, but also it's just totally under control, which is phenomenal. Um, and in fact, David, we'll be using your, your Sony Amping Class A, which is only a Less than twenty watts, yep. isn't it, in class yep. A? Mm. And, and actually, these are really must be incredibly efficient because they were they were they were kicking it out. It yeah. was fantastic. Thank yeah. you. 
Yeah. They said it about oh, 91 dB. Yeah. Um, but also the impedance load is, is quite stable. It's yeah. quite linear. There aren't any nasty dips to, What's you know. What's the minimum, roughly? Uh, minimum on these was about 6, 6.2, yeah, very I think. good. So not too bad. Nominal yeah. 8. Um, yeah. That's another benefit that comes with the transmission line loading. It's yeah. a more sort of... Mm even acoustical impedance if you like yeah. behind the cone that means yeah. it's not sort of fighting against a narrow Q tuning frequency yeah. which often is where you get a spike in the impedance and um, generally easier than infinite baffle types uh, in terms of um, that's it uh, loads yeah low impedance load you know? mm -hmm. amazing um, mm. and vault of course have got a great history um, I mean I remember them as far as back as the 70s and they were very desirable kind of professional mm. um, drive unit manufacturer, weren't they? They were, um, can yeah. You, can yeah. you tell us about the company? Is it, where's it based now? They're based in Dorset. Yep. Um, have been for, for some time. Yep. Um, they're a wonderful operation and uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. I was there just a few weeks ago and um, visiting their facility and, um, and just seeing all the, you know, all the coils being wound, all the domes being sort of doped by hand. Yep. Um, obviously all the radial drivers sort of, being assembled, it's yeah, quite the process to, yeah. to actually watch. Yeah. Um, Strangely, yeah. not there's you know um, domestic hi-fi speakers tend not to use Volt drivers, do they? They're they're not a, not particularly common, I think. Certainly not the radials yeah. um, or the or the three inch domes. Yeah. Not in not in hi-fi speakers no. so much. Much more pro. Mm. Yeah. Oriented. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, but that's not to say that they you know can't perform in that capacity no, i think it certainly can it's, it's just yeah. uh yeah <laughs> as it's we've sort heard. Of how you implement them and yeah. um no absolutely yeah absolutely and jess look jess we're gonna can we completely embarrass you here yeah. david as you know on all of our high forests we're gonna do a riffometer oh the so riffometer. we're gonna do a riffometer on you jess so um would you like to go first mr p um okay um nine and a half oh thank you so very i was much. gonna go one yeah. <laughs> so I, I I don't give tens unless no. something strange has happened. Of course. So, wow. Um, that's but I mean, crazy. I, I think, Thank you. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, th I think they're. Um, and it wasn't just because you bought me a drink earlier either. So. Uh, <laughs> but um, but that I, helped. Yeah, that <laughs> helped. Otherwise, there would be a seven. But uh, hey. yeah. No. So um, I mean, they are they are a great loudspeaker in a kind of strangely. Mm. Obviously, they're they're bang up to date with high-tech drive units um, but they're kind of in a in a classic mold of speakers in the sense that you know the late 70s early 80s you had very big very large speakers mm. that could move air around mm. um, and they're wide baffle they're very deep um, and um, you know there's there's they're, they're not built for domestic considerations mm. I mean they look great they look great sure but yeah. um, you know uh, then then we're not talking narrow baffle no. uh, tower speakers no it's, it's, an, it's an unapologetically yeah. sort of you know yeah. present loudspeaker yes. um, yeah and basically you know loudspeakers are there to move air mm. uh, as best as they can and sure. you know there's a, there's a way of doing that and that's at least a three way isn't it I think um, so and, yeah uh, you know, for optimal results absolutely yeah. a large cabinet yeah. uh, and, and you know the, the drive units have to be married together perfectly mm. and I think you've done a great job thank here. you and the transmission line hmm. is kind of invisible. You don't really hear it. Mm. You, it just gets on. Uh, and the bass is very tuneful. Uh, and it doesn't boom at you. Mm. And one of the things that I feared when you um, mm. when you, you set up speakers here was yeah. that they would boom in my room. Sure. And they don't. That's so, wonderful. Yeah, it's great. So. Mm. Can I, just talking about rooms, I mean, just to get a decent sound out of a, a hotel room you know, at a, a hi-fi show is, is a real achievement as well. Um, yeah. and, and I've never heard these speakers sound anything but brilliant. Mm. So, you know, Thank and you. certainly in your listening room, David, which is a lovely room, by the way, to, to listen to. Mm. It really, you know, they've really come together today. Yeah. And they've been deeply impressive. Yeah. And for you to move your NS1000s. Oh, my God. I know. I feel very, very to, honest and very privileged. Us? Yes. Yeah. So, look, I'm not afraid of it. And I'm happy to give you a 10 because oh. I would be absolutely proud to wow. own these speakers. And my I think goodness. You sick of fans. You bought me a pint. <laughs> what can I say? Bought now we know the secret. And on that note, Thank you. Jez, thank you so much for joining us. It's been my pleasure. It's been a pleasure to have you on the Hi Fi sofa. Thank you. It's and great on, to be from here. David and I, thank you for joining us as well. And we'll see you at the next one. Cheers. Thanks, Bye. 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 Bye.